Let's read that. Uh, four. Baruch chapter four, verse one. Baruch chapter four, verse one. Mm -hmm. This is the book of the commandments of God, and the law that endureth forever. Uh -huh. All that all they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So the commandments it said, "Hey, all of us that keep it shall come to life." So like many, like a few, of you said. You want to live forever. You want to get the kingdom. So the way we was out there lost, somebody uh, said that we were lost. We didn't really understand what was going on. So now it says all day that keep the commandments shall come to life. Now we live in before that. We ain't lived until we came into this truth. We have not lived until now. So now we are living. Go ahead. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. That thou mayest be illuminated. We get the kingdom. Our wisdom and everything continues to grow. We get illuminated. Like like they got the crazy Illuminati crap out here now. They ain't the, illumin the illuminated ones. We are. They are not the illuminated ones. They That's the dark right. ones. That's why I say they turn themselves into the children. Matter of fact, let's get that in Corinthians. You know what I'm talking about? Let's get that. I don't know if you can find it for me real quick. One of us is going to find it first. One of us is going to find it. Look, now I done already, I done already went off the topic. But we're going to come back to the topic. <laughs> we're going to come back to it. <laughs> they turn to the, to the children of light. All right. Second Corinthians. Yep. Chap chapter 11, verse 14. Oh, praises. And no marvel, for Satan himself. It's transformed. Uh, jump up to 13. Jump up to 13. Jump up to 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, mm -hmm. that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Mm -hmm. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And that's what has happened. You have the world, they call themselves the Illuminati, and you got all these false prophets in them out here trying to take trying to take something that don't belong to them. They're trying to act like they're the people of God. They're not the people of God. Read on down. They are false prophets. Go ahead. And no marvel. And we are not to marvel. We are not to marvel. Go ahead. For Satan himself. It's transformed into an angel of light. Because Satan himself, the devil himself, transformed himself into an angel of light. Go ahead. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. So you have his leaders. Satan's leaders have made themselves look a certain way. Have put it out there in the media that they are the ones have made themselves look a certain way to everybody else in the whole world by saying they're the real Jews. When they're not the Jews, we are. So we out in the world, when we come into the truth, we're just figuring this out, and it all feels good. It all feels good. Go ahead, finish it out. Whose end shall be according to their works. And their end shall be according until they works. They're going to be destroyed. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to Baruch 4. So we are the illuminated ones. They are not the people of light. No. No, they're not them. Let's read that again. Verse Baruch, 2. Baruch chapter 4, verse 2. Uh -huh. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Go ahead. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee. To a strange nation. Now, now this statement right here is is very heavy. We read that and we read it and we go right over real fast. But a lot of us that's 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 in this class right now, we know now that God don't love everybody. Before we was taught that He did love everybody because those very leaders or ministers of Satan have made themselves sound good and look nice that we were deceived. We didn't study the Bible. We didn't study the Bible. So go ahead. So now we know that all that was lies that they taught us. Go ahead. Verse 4. O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to God 
are made known unto us. And that's what we are happy for now. That's why we all came into the truth. When we heard we were the Israelites, we were happy. We were pleased. It was a hey, some of us probably cried when we heard that we were the Israelites. Some of us may have broke down. Some of us was like, yo, where the school at? Some of us, it may have taken us a little time to come in. But we were still happy to find out we were the Israelites, though. We were still excited to find out that the commandments belonged to us. So then we came into this truth. Go ahead. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. The memorial of Israel. We are to be of good cheer because we are the, the memorial of Israel. So we have to take joy in the fact that we are the Israelites, all right? But now, what happens when we come into the truth, and what I noticed this week, uh, dealing with uh, dealing with a lot of a lot of different calls and things like that this week, that we don't take the time, or we, a lot of us don't take the time to study like we should. And just like we read in 2 Corinthians, that the ministers of Satan, they are deceitful. But if we don't prepare ourselves, we will be deceived. They're going, there's going to be, doc, there's doctrines coming out all the time. What's the new one? What's the new one that we just talked about on the four chapters that I didn't know nothing about? The, Anna, the Anunnaki, bro. I didn't even know what that was. I didn't even know what that was. So you got these different doctrines that come out where they are talking about false gods and crap. And then they have no proof of them, no proof. But then the Bible is a history book and everything that's written in it has come to pass. Most of it, I'll say that most of it. But then we got a lot of things like Christ ain't come back yet. All of Israel ain't woke up yet, but we waking up in these last days and you see it happening. And they'll tell us that the Bible is false and ask us, why are we reading this book? Why do we study our book? And that is because they're trying to deceive us to make us doubt what we committed to when we first came into this truth. Because when we first came in, we was like, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. And they're trying to change our minds. So let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5.21. Because this scripture right here hasn't applied to nobody in the world except us. I ain't never, I ain't, I ain't never even know this thing was in the darn Bible until I came to the truth. Read that. This scripture that we're going to read now, it, it is the only, this scripture, I have never heard it be applied the way that it is applied in the truth. Every We can prove why we come to the Sabbath on the seventh day of the week. Christians, can't so-called Christians, cannot prove why they go to church on Sunday. We can prove why we keep the new moon. They can't prove why they do Christmas and all of that crap. They have no clue of what they're doing. No one asks them to prove anything, but it sounds good and it looks good on, on TV or on, your, or on camera or on the web, wherever the heck they streaming the stuff to. It all looks good, but the Bible tells, tells us to apply this scripture. Read that. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. It said prove all things. We are the only ones that have to do this right here. If, if, if you online, don't unmute it. I just want to see the hands go up. If you online, in your pastor, when you grew up, if they had to prove what they were doing, put your hand up. There it is. Look, one hand was going up. It went up early. And then it was like, well, wait a minute. I, ain't, I didn't hear the full question. You heard the full question. The hand went down. And that is because none of our past, no pastor on the planet had to prove why we was there on Sunday. As soon as you ask them, they get mad at you. We're the only ones that have to prove why we do what we do because that's this is right. when people see us do it, that's when they want to start questioning the Bible. Oh, man. So, sis, oh, no, sis took a hand down. I don't know if she rose her hand up because ain't no way. Ain't no way your pastor proved nothing. Oh, she gave a hand clap. That's what it was. <laughs> you hit the wrong button. We rocking with you, sis. We rocking with you. Nobody's ever had to prove that. Watch this. We got a video for you. We got a video for you. We got a pastor video over there. I don't really give a darn. Play one of them if you got one. Well, wait a minute. The IT team is running around the building. All right. Here we go. 
It's only a few of us in here, y'all. So <laughs> bear with us, bear with us. All right. So let's let's take a look at look at look at these pastors or whatever, or what in the world going on. Look, sis said, that's why I came in. Cause they can prove a darn thing. They can't prove nothing on what we doing. Absolute. They they go to they go to church, do Easter, dress up in rainbow suits, all kinds of darn pastel colors. And then you ask them why they do it, and can't nobody explain the goddamn thing. But then we can explain why we do it, and then it's all looked at as crazy. But they can't speak evil of it because we're reading it from the Bible. Go ahead. 16. Right. So we'll use it. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. Probably one of the most popular verses around. You see him at football games. Used to anyway. People holding up signs at John 3.16. That is a great promise. That, and, and it's great truth that God so loved the world, that means us, the people, that he gave, he willingly gave his only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever the offers to all of us believes, place their trust, their faith in what Christ has done, shall not perish, but have eternal life. What a great promise from God. And listen, I know it may be churchy words, but it is so true that God made a promise that if you believe in what Jesus Christ has done, he died on the cross your sin, the Bible says you will have eternal life. Listen, don't argue with it. Just receive it. Believe in Jesus Christ and receive eternal life. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> the hell is this? Yo, 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 we have kids in the congregation that could break that down. Kids that could break that down. So let's explain it. Because remember what the scripture said, prove all things, right? So now let's do that. Let's prove it. Let's go to Isaiah 45, 17. We're going to read that. We're going to prove it real fast. And we're just for those that, like I say, I don't want to assume that we all know this stuff anymore because I know I've done it before and I, and I get caught up in it and I get going and I, and I don't slow down. And we have to start slowing down to make sure that, that y'all get it. Go ahead. Let's read it. Isaiah chapter 4. 45, verse 17. Uh -huh. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Go ahead. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. So that means the kingdom of heaven is only for Israel. They didn't have nobody else. We let them read the whole scripture. So that way you'll see that only one people was listed there. Israel. Then it said Israel is the world without end. Now, let's go to Acts 2 and 21. Let's go there. So now we know that there is a, there in, in the scriptures, there is a world of Israel in the scriptures. Let's read that. Acts, now let's go to Acts 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So there you go. It said, whosoever. So the whosoever is Israel once again. But no one challenged that pastor. Nobody at that congregation. He talking about churchy words. It is churchy words. Lies. Words that just sound good for the masses. Because if they told the truth, they would treat them the same way they treat us. Say you a hate group. That suspicious. They will call them a hate group. Like you said, you don't find that suspicious. That's what they will call us. They just like they call us a hate group. They they would call them a hate group if they taught it the way it's supposed to be taught. But they don't have to prove what they're saying. So now, because of that, let's go to John nine seventeen. John nine seventeen or seventeen nine. Where it says, I pray not for the world. Let's see. Let's see what let's give let's give a couple of scriptures for the world. John chapter 17, verse 9. Mm -hmm. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So I guess Christ is wrong when he said, when he said that he died for the world, that he loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. Now Christ is saying, Look, Father. I, I pray not for the world. <laughs> I only pray for the ones you gave me. Who was, read on to finish the verse. 
but for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine, they are thine. So who was given to Christ? Go to Matthew chapter 15 or 24, 15, 15, 24. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That was who was given to Christ, the house of Israel. That was who was given to him. So he only prays for the Israelites. The world is the Israelites. The whosoever is the Israelites. Now let's go to John 3, 16 again. Let's read what this guy did, because according to the scriptures, he was supposed to prove what he said. He just lied to anybody that watched that video. And every single one of them lie like that. Even in Islam, they lying like that. Go ahead. John chapter 3, verse 16. Uh -huh. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Read. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And what he read was that scripture. We just proved that the world is Israel because it's Israelites having a conversation in the chapter when you read the top of the chapter. Verse 14 is talking about when we was in the wilderness and Moses had to put the, the snake on the stick because Israel was dying in numbers. Why they never can't prove that? That is because they are not in the truth. It is not given to them to understand the Bible. That is why they don't have to prove nothing. Nobody, anybody that's listening to them don't make them prove anything because they don't know themselves, just like we was once out there. But when we come into the truth, we are expected to prove why we do what we do. So let's read that in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 again. I mean, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Yes, 1 sir. Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. So hold fast to that which is good. Go to Titus chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 and verse 7. In all things, showing thyself. Matter of fact, read verse 6. Verse 6. Young men, likewise. Exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. So they'll tell us the laws are done away with, but we're told to do good works right here. We're told to do good works. They don't even know what's good in the Bible. Go ahead. Doctrine, showing up uncorruptness, gravity. I'm sorry. Go to, let's get the good. Like I said, I got to slow down sometimes. Romans 7 and 12. Go to Romans 7 and 12 for good. Let's see the pattern of good works we must have. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So the commandments are what's good. So the good works we're supposed to be doing is keeping the commandments. Let's go back now. Titus 2 and 7 again. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. In all things. Showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. So when it says showing uncorruptness, we can't be corrupt. So how do we do that if we out here in all manner of evil when they tell us we can do what we want to do or Christ done away with the law? So if Christ did away with the law, why would it tell us to be uncorrupted? Why would we have to show a pattern of good works? Go ahead. Sound, speech. Our speech must be good so we can't be talking out the side of our neck, taking conversations all into lustful conversations, talking about the last girl you done smashed or talking about gossiping. Our speech must be on point. Go ahead. That cannot be condemned. That our speech, it cannot be condemned and nobody speak evil of what we're saying. Go ahead. That he that is of the contrary part, may be ashamed. So that those of the contrary part may be ashamed. How do you show somebody that is not keeping the commandments how to keep the commandments if you don't have no commandments to keep? Because that's what they're telling us, that the laws are done away with. They just say believe on Christ. Well, to believe something, you got to do something to prove you believe it. But they'll tell you, nope, just believe. Go ahead. 
sound speech that cannot be condemned, mm-hmm. that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, Go ahead. having no evil thing to say of you. Because then you're blameless. So our conversation and the way we carry ourselves, we have to change the way we carry ourselves because then no one can speak evil about what we're doing. They can't say, I saw her in the club last night. You know how they do when they go to church on Sunday. They was in the club Saturday night. They can't say that about us. They can't say that about us. We're reading why we do what we do. Why don't you go to the club? Because the Bible said you are not supposed to. I ain't supposed to be reveling. You can't speak evil about what I'm doing. So when we come into this truth, we have to study the basics to be that way. So we're happy and it's beautiful when we come into the truth because we have that zeal. But when we come in, we have to find out the why we do what we do. Because a lot of times we'll come to the Sabbath, we'll come to the new moons just because somebody said so. Bishop Nim put it out there for us to follow the commandments. But like he tells us all the time, we cannot be forever students. We are expected to go teach. We're expected to learn, meaning learn why you do what you do so you are not deceived by anyone. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. tries to come and shake and shake your faith because they're going they're going to keep doing it they're going to keep putting it on tv they're going to keep putting it in the streets they're going to have all these dumb parades and events around cities now that's going crazy going crazy you had you literally had at a a, a african-american joint you had the people out there at a concert rapping about nonsense nothing about our people was glorified with the rap So what are they trying to do? They're trying to entertain our kids and our children and some of the grown folks to make you stick around and get caught up in the sin. But we have to carry ourselves in a way that when people see us, they get ashamed to where it will correct them. You know, like a lot of times our sisters, y'all don't y'all don't got y'all don't go in the street and yell at anybody. But when you walk around with your nice clothes, your nice skirts and dresses on, fringed up, and you got your beautiful head wrap on. And then sisters that don't dress like that see you, they feel like they need to cover up. That's how they supposed to feel. That's what the Bible said. If they contrary to you, they're supposed to be ashamed when you walk in the room. That's why when you walk in a room, everybody be, be get quiet around your family when you walk in the room. That's why, because they evil. So they get all quiet and all shameful because they know when you walk in a the room, there is a difference between you and them. You're trying to live right, so, and they know you can prove what you do and why you do it. So therefore, they get ashamed because they can't prove why they do anything. All right? Is that on that? Yep, that's it on that. Uh. Go to go to First Peter, First Peter, First Peter three fifteen. So we have to correct our speech and the way we carry ourselves. Now let's go to First Peter chapter uh, three verse fifteen. Let's read that. Like it says Pe- basic class, but I just want y'all to think on some things today. Go ahead. First Peter chapter three verse fifteen. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Mm-hmm. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh of you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Did anybody ever ask you why you act different? Anybody? You know why? Did anybody ask y'all, ITT? Did anybody ask y'all? Anybody come up to y'all and be like, look, why y'all follow Christianity? Nobody asked that. Nobody asks because everybody doing the dumb crap. Everybody doing the same dumb thing. No, if you said you were Christian, that was the political answer for everyone to leave you alone. 
That's what that is. But let's read this scripture again right here in 1 Peter 3.15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Uh -huh. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of hope, a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, since y'all have been in the truth, have people ever asked you, why do you dress different? Why do you look different? Why do you, why do you go to church on the Sabbath? Raise your hand. If his family don't even matter, look, look, there you go, a little, see? Because we're the only ones that this applies to. We're the only ones that this applies to. Because when we out there in Islam, nobody follows people around trying to figure that crap out. All you got, you, you ain't, you, it's easy. It's Christianity. It's the same thing. All you're doing is saying Allah versus whatever in the word, you know, Versus you saying Jesus, and you're not following Jesus at all. So it don't matter. That's what they're doing. All y'all can put your hands down now. All praises. But that's what they're doing. This right here, though, says when we come into the truth and we're freeing ourselves from the sins. That's why I say the truth shall make you free. Free from sin. To go with the question that uh, the officer asked earlier. To free us from sin. Now we don't act or look like no one else. Everybody knows something different. Everybody. So therefore, they're trying to figure it out. Some are coming with sincerity, and some are trying to come with deceit and things like that. But they know something ain't the same. So now they come and ask. So the Bible tells us to always be ready to give an answer. Read that verse again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer. To every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Go ahead. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you your good conversation in Christ. That's what we just read. They're going to be ashamed when you come around because you don't act like everybody else. So when we come into the truth, we must study to give the answer to anybody that asks as to why do we do what we do. That is the hope that's in us. When they asking us, hey, why do you go to church on the Sabbath? They asking of the hope that is within us. Why do you wear fringes? They're asking of the hope that is within us. Why do you call yourself an Israelite? They ask of the hope that is within us. How do we get the kingdom? How do you know God only loves Israel? Why do you keep the feast days? What is that all about? So when we come into the truth, we ourselves have to ask, why are we doing what we're doing? So we can be able to provide these answers. Because the very first people that's going to ask you is going to be people that know you, that are close to you. And you are required. You're required to give them an answer. And those that are contrary to you, that's what verse 16 says, that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. They're going to be ashamed when you come around. They're going to, oh, she or he think he all that. You is all that, because God said you all that. You want to prove it? Remember, we got to prove all things. They'll get Deuteronomy. <laughs> you is all that. Problem is, they don't know they all that. So we're going to read the scripture to prove that we are all that. That's what the Bible said. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. I don't know about you. That sound like we all that. That sound like we all that. Sound like we above everybody. So you darn right that's how we supposed to walk around. So it, so And it's a shame how a lot of us will be in the world and our families will tell us while we was out in the world messing up, having kids out of wedlock, lying, going to the club, blowing money. You got... you whoremongering around, all that dumb stuff, clubbing, all of that, doing drugs, everything, drinking. And then they'll tell you, 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 need, to, you need to find Jesus. 
You need you need the Bible. You need prayer. You need to go to church. And you need to repent. Then when you do just that, all of a sudden, you need to stop what you're doing. <laughs> You, look, what you're doing is not what I was trying to tell you to do. That's how they talk. That ain't what I meant. Well, Darren, I'm I'm not whoring them. I'm not whoring around anymore. I'm not robbing nobody no more. I ain't going to prison no more. I ain't murdering nobody. I ain't even thinking about murdering nobody no more. I'm I'm trying to live. I'm taking care of the kids that I made because I wasn't before. I'm married now instead of sitting up here sleeping around with all these different women. Now we get married. Or the women say, no, I ain't having no more sex outside of marriage. No. Then they'll tell you, now you're wrong. You can't make that stuff up. They should be ashamed. And they get that way because they're trying to pull you out of the truth. And you have to study to be able to identify the deceit that's going on. All right? <laughs> and that's exactly how they be. That's freaking ridiculous. How many of y'all experienced that? Let me see. How many of y'all experienced that they told you you need God, and then when you actually came into the truth and kept the commandments, now all of a sudden they tell you to stop stop following God? It might have been your wife, might have been your husband, might have been your mama and them, all of them. See, look, everybody hand up. And that's because all of us go through the same thing. That is why we're the only ones that understand what the Bible says. It's kind of funny. You can take your hands down. It's kind of funny how all the Christians, they all use the very same doctrine to lie about. They all use John 3.16 and don't read no other verse. They all read there is neither Jew nor Greek and don't read no other verse. Huh? All creatures of God are good. They use that and don't go nowhere else to prove what they're saying. But then when we come into the truth, we can prove why we do what we do, and we all speak the same thing. Huh. Let's see if that's supposed to be the case. Go to 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Freedom. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. And that's what it said. We all should speak the same thing. That's why we all use the same scriptures to prove why we do what we do. Versus, you got Baptists out here. You got Methodists out here. You got the Church of Christ out here. You got uh, uh, AME, Pentecostal, Islam. What's the other one? L Lutheran, huh? Catholicism, uh, Jewish. Can't none of them prove why the heck they do what they do. Ain't no scripture in the Bible that they use to prove what they do. In Islam, you do use the Bible. You do. You, you literally take the Quran and partner it with the Bible to try to prove what the Quran is saying. But the Bible tells you to keep the commandments. You can't don't find that suspicious. You can't make that stuff up. We're the only ones that got to prove. We're the only ones that have the proof as to what we're doing. But we got to study because when people come and question us, they want to know. We have to give them an answer. Go to uh, Go to Proverbs. Proverbs, I think it's 1523, I believe. 1523 or 1323. I'll find it. Give me a second. Yeah, 1523. 1523. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 15, verse 23. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season, how good is it? It said, how good is it when it's spoken in due season? You know when that due season is? When they ask you. When they come and ask you about it. And it ain't, I ain't talking about at work or nothing like that. Because at work, people will try to be deceitful at work. You don't talk about that stuff at work. Because that's not the place to talk about it and all of that stuff. But when you are outside of work and your family or people ask you why you do what you do, it is a great season to explain to them who you are. That is a great time. Enjoy the conversation. You should have a joy when someone asks you, why do you follow the commandments? Why do you follow the Bible? Why do you call yourself an Israelite? Take joy in that. Because nine times out of ten, if they're coming to ask you, uh, it, now I'm, I'll say this, if they Esau and them, they just inquiring. But that ain't the time. We really don't care. But we talking about when our people come up. When our people come up and ask, that's a great time. That's a great time for us that, that love to talk about the Bible. Because that person is asking 
because they really are curious about what's going on. They're going to listen to what you're saying because they approach you. Because most of the time, I, I don't know about y'all, but more people of other nations ask me than our own people. Why do you wear those fringes? Jake act like they don't see the fringes. They look, they act like they look up all day like this. <laughs> That's how they be acting. But when they do ask, it is a beautiful time. It's in season at that moment to explain to them who we are and why you do what you do. So we have to study and prepare ourselves for that. The same way you had that joy when you came in as to why you came in, whatever that reason may have been, you wanted to be a prophet of the Lord. You want all of us ultimately want to get the kingdom. You you found out why we are in the condition we are in and how to get out. That same joy when you got those answers. You must have that same joy for the people to get those answers too. So the way you felt when you received it, you must want another person to feel the way you felt. You must want that for them. And the only way you'll be able to do it is if when you come into the truth, you get the answers to your why. Why do I come to the new moon on this day? Why do we come to the Sabbath? All right, read on down. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 24. Mm -hmm. The way of life is above to the wise. Go ahead. That he may depart from hell beneath. Go ahead. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, mm -hmm. but he will establish the border of the widow. So the proud will be destroyed. Go ahead. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the, the Lord, mm -hmm. but the words of the pure are pleasant words. And the words of the pure are pleasant words. So those that follow the commandments, those are the pure. When you read Psalms chapter 19, verse 8, those are the pure. The commandments are pure. So the words are the, of the pure are pleasant words. Your words are pleasant to those that ask of the hope that's in you. Those that really want to know what's going on and they watch and see how you carry yourself, you can give pleasant words to another person to where they themselves will repent because you've prepared for them. You've been preparing for them the whole time you've been in the truth, getting ready to have that conversation. So when they come ask, you're able to do so. Go ahead. Verse 27. He that is greedy of grain. Troubleth his own house. So he that is greedy of gain, trouble his own house. Go ahead. But he that hateth gifts shall live. The one that hates gifts, meaning you can't be persuaded off of your square because of lies. Because of somebody giving you money. A gift, like the scriptures say, a gift destroyeth the heart. You can't be destroyed because you don't accept gifts. Meaning those gifts ain't going to take you away from this truth. Because somebody give you something ain't going to change the way you are when it comes to God. Go ahead. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. Uh -huh. But the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. And that's what the pastor that we just saw. He don't study the Bible to give no darn John 3.16 breakdown to say God love everybody and you just believe. He don't study. But it said the righteous study to answer. We are the only ones that prove all things apply to. That's what this is saying. The heart of the righteous study to answer. So that would mean if they're not righteous, they're not going to do that. It doesn't apply to them because they're not going to do it. Letting you know the reason why this Bible was written the way it was written is so the righteous can understand it. And we're the only ones that get to have the joy of the understanding that is within it because we're the ones that truly understand what it's saying. And those that ain't righteous don't understand the daggone thing that's going on in the world, in, in, in this Bible, or in the world, with all the prophecies and things that's going on right now. Go to, uh, go to, no, that's it on, yeah, that's it on that. Go to Psalms, no, we already did that. Yeah, go to Psalms 19 and 8 right fast. Let's read that about the pure. Like I said, I need to slow down, make sure that everybody get it. Psalms, Psalms 19 and 8, let's find out what the pure is. Read 7 and 8 with me. Psalms 19 verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Mm -hmm. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Go ahead. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, uh -huh. enlightening the eyes. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Putting wisdom within us. 
making us shine, making us the illuminated ones. <laughs> there are people that don't know what they're going on in the Bible. It can't prove nothing. That's why I say it's only for us. That's why when we come into the truth, we have to take the learning serious. All right, go to go to Hebrews chapter 5. Go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. We're almost done now. A couple more scriptures. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. for, when the, for the time he ought to be teachers, he have need that one teach you again, mm -hmm. which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And that's that's what we was reading. Uh, that was one of the questions that uh, one of the brothers asked about, like, what does it mean to, to not your mouth not to cause your flesh to sin? We must be taught again. So at the top of that chapter, it said, hey, take off your shoes when you go into the house of the Lord. Get rid of all that old doctrine you was taught. So we must be taught again. We must come in the truth and understand we have to be taught all over again. Go ahead, read down. And are become such as have need of milk mm -hmm. and not of strong and meat. And we need, got need of milk and not of strong meat because babies drink milk. So the milk is in Deuteronomy. Let's read that. Let's get the milk in Deuteronomy. So like all of the laws, like the Sabbath day, the fringes, uh, and all the different Sabbaths because Passover is a Sabbath. New moon is a Sabbath. Tabernacles is a Sabbath. So we must le or, or learning how learning what idolatry really is, learning what usury is, learning what all these different laws are. We must be taught the milk because the milk in the Bible is the laws of God, not the deep breakdowns. That's the meat. So let's read that. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse one. Go ahead. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you mm -hmm. that you might do them in the land. Whether you go to possess it. So the commandments is what we were taught. Now jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. So our children ain't going to understand the 12 feathers break down. They're not going to understand that that is the 12 uh, Roman uh, Caesars. They're not going to understand that. But they will understand thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. They understand those. They understand, look, don't, don't hate your brother. Don't hate your sister. Read on. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And it's telling us that is what we should be having conversation. Remember, it said our conversation must change. So we must have these conversations also with our kids. Go ahead. And when thou walkest by the way. Go ahead. And when thou liest down. Mm -hmm. The bedtime stories should be stories of the laws of God. Go ahead. And when thou risest up. And when they wake up, we should be talking to them about the laws of God. That's the milk. That is the milk when it comes to the Bible. Now, let's go back. Was that it on Hebrews? That was it in Hebrews? That was it on 13? All praises. Go to Isaiah 41, 21. Yeah, let's read the rest of 13. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. So all of us that use milk, and when we are new in the truth, we are unskilled. We are, we are unskilled. All we're learning is how and why we keep the commandments. Because once you learn what to do, then you got to learn, you got to learn why you do it so you can be able to explain it to others. Because you want others to have that very same feeling you got when it was explained to you. Go ahead. For he is a babe, but strong meat belonged to them. That are of full age. So strong meat, the deep things belong to them that are full age. So we have to be consistent in being taught the laws over and over again and consistent in applying those laws. That's why I study, pray, apply. Study, pray, apply. Because it is a law that we study the Bible. What we're going over today is a law that we must study. It said, look. Learn to give an, study to give an answer of those that ask of the hope in you. It didn't say you might do that. It told you to do it. That's a commandment that we got to do it. And, and the reason why we should want to do it is the same reason why we came into the truth. The feeling we got and what we thought when we heard it, we should want others to have that same thought and feeling when, when, when they hear it. 
Is that it on that verse? Go ahead. But strong meat belonging to them that are of full age, mm -hmm. even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. And it says we got to have our senses exercised, so we got to be tested. We got to go through things before we are ready for the strong meat. All right? Let's go to Isaiah 41.21. Because that's why I say debate thy cause for us. We're the ones that got to debate our cause. <laughs> we don't want to study. Don't nobody got to explain nothing they do. Because they, they don't have the understanding of the Bible. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 21. Produce your cause, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Go ahead. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former thing. Now, whenever whenever we put this out to all of the other other pastors and these other leaders in the world, they never can bring their strong reason as to why they do what they do or why we are wrong with why we do what we do. They cannot prove it. So we should never be shaken no matter how much they transform themselves into the light or try to make themselves look like they are righteous. Just because they sound nice when they speak, just because they wear the expensive suits, no one gives a darn. We don't care. Because according to the Bible, we going to make them prove it. Just like we have to prove why we do what we do, we going to make them prove it to us. So if they say we're not Israel, prove it to me. Show me, because I can show you how I know I am. You got to show me why I ain't. Are we the Gentiles? Which one? Well, Sunday worship, we supposed to go to church on Sunday. Show me the scripture. Nobody has those answers. That's why now they're putting all this stuff online to, to talk nonsense. Now they got it saying that Christ is Middle Eastern. Bring your proof. Middle East wasn't even a location 50, 60 years ago. It wasn't even a location. So how was he Middle Eastern if it wasn't a place before? Matter of fact, let's prove that he's not Arabian. See, we got to prove everything. We read the comments and stuff that people put on our on our YouTube, all that crazy stuff. And then we're going to come back. And we, matter of fact, no, read in Isaiah. Read Isaiah 21. Let's spend, Isaiah 41. We're going to finish this. Then we'll go to Revelations and end right there. We'll read about the image of Christ and end right there. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 21. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, said the king of Jacob. Mm hmm let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them or declare us things for to come. And we can do that using the Bible. Pastor can't show us why these different things are happening on earth today. They can't show us the past. They don't understand the vision of Daniel. They don't get it. To know that we at the end now. They don't understand that. That's why they all still talking about China going to be the next superpower. No, they ain't. We is. We going to rule the earth next. <laughs> we got the proof in the Bible. But they can't prove it. Go ahead. Verse 23. Show the things that are to come hereafter. That we may know that ye are gods. Yea, do good or do evil. That we may dismay, be dismayed. And behold it together. Go ahead. Behold, you are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth there you. There it is. It said, Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. So these false teachers, they cannot prove nothing. They are an abomination to us. They are an abomination to us because they can't show us in the Bible what happened before, and what's on his way to us. They have no clue. That's why they keep saying it's your season. Season for what? They can't explain it. So we must continue to study so that when those that come after us, and there's many scriptures we could have went to today. I just didn't want to go into all of that today. Just Keeping it basic just to give us some thought. So let's go to Revelation. Let's prove what Christ looked like for all the uh, all the comments and stuff we've seen on our YouTube page when they say that Christ was Middle Eastern. Matter of fact, let's look up the word Middle East. When was Middle East created? When in the world was that? 
Because see, like I said, we bring your strong reason. Prove all this. <laughs> That's what we've had to do. So let's see if those of you that say he's Middle Eastern, you prove to me. You prove it to me. So let's look up the term Middle East. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so wait a minute. So we look. All you gotta do is Google the term Middle East. It said the Middle East. Oh, go ahead and read it. I'm sorry, Rita. I done took off. The Middle East was originally originally coined in the late 19th century by the British, along with the, with other Eurocentric ge geographic terms. Such as the Near East. Why don't Why don't they say Why don't they ever say he's he's Near Eastern? <laughs> Go ahead. The Eastern Mediterranean regions closest to Europe, and the Far East, China, Japan, Korea, and other East Asian in entities much farther away from Europe. So the Middle East didn't come about until the 19th century. So you're telling me that he's Middle Eastern, and that term was just given. In the 19th century? Freaking believable. All right, now let's read what Christ looked like. Let's see if he's if he looks like the Arabs in them. Because they try to say he's Middle Eastern. Because, yes, the Arabs in them are a melanated people. Yes, they are. But they don't got hair like us. They don't got hair like us. You ain't pulling the wool over our faces, over our heads, and blinding us. That ain't happening. Let's read that. Verse 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Go ahead. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So that's what they, they will read that. And everybody ignores the fact that this was written to show. So they'll tell you it's not important that we know what Christ looked like. But literally, it's written in verse 1. It was written to show unto the servants. So if it doesn't matter to you, you ain't a servant of God. If it don't matter what he looked like to you, you are not a servant of God. Because this right here just said that this was written to show to the servants of God. So for those of you that say it's not important, don't worry. You're not a servant of God. Go Now, let's jump down. Matter of fact, verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Go ahead. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. That's how you know. Hey, blessed is he that readeth, because everybody don't read. They just parakeet what white people say. Because we didn't come up with this doctrine. That doctrine was pushed into the world. Now we repeat it. Because we couldn't read and write for 400. Well, for how many years? 200-something years? We couldn't read and write, so we ain't put it out there. We didn't draw the images to look like us in deceit. We they will they look like us all the way back, and then they had what is it? Whitewashing. What is it? Conoclasm to make the images white, though. And we got the proof, and everybody knows that this happened. And then when you show them an image of Jesus being a black man, everybody got a problem. But if color didn't matter, what are you so mad about when he's a black man? You don't find that suspicious? All right. Verse 14, we'll jump down. Let's just read what he looked like. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Mm -hmm. And now white like wool. They'll tell you, no, that just means his hair was white. All right. So if Jesus looked like God, how let's, 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 let's go there. Let's see what kind of hair did God have. Let's see. Let's go there. Let's read that in Daniel. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Mm -hmm. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. So God is the Ancient of Days. He did have a body. He sat down. Go ahead. He Who? does have a body. He sit down. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. Go ahead. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. So God's hair is like black people hair. Not like white people her, black people her. So when you say that that it would look Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern don't have her like me. No. Quit lying. <laughs> Is that that verse? Let's go. Let's go back to Revelation. <laughs> Re 
Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Mm -hmm. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because his first miracle was turning water into wine. Go ahead. And his feet. And his feet. Like unto fine brass. So brass. Let's put the image of brass on the screen. Let's see what brass look like. Good grief. And you'll have people that cannot prove he looked like a Middle Eastern without just getting on YouTube or Google and Googling and typing in Jesus in the Middle East. And then whatever pops up, that's what they say he looked like. No biblical proof. So that's brass. It is a derivative of brown. Now stop. That look like burnt brass on the left, though. That look like burnt brass. So now let's read the rest of the scripture. I leave it on the screen. Leave that right there on the screen. Leave it right there on the screen. And his feet <laughs> like unto fine brass. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. Oh, so the burnt brass, it is very dark brown. So you mean to tell me that Christ is a so-called black man with woolly hair. He does not get her like white people or Arab people. He have That's her right. like the Negroes, like us. So when you say he's Middle Eastern, get the heck up out of here. Where is your proof? Bring forth your strong reason. Prove it using the Bible. But you can't do it. So therefore, you just throw out rhetoric out here to try to deceive those that are trying to understand the truth. And for brothers and sisters like us, we have to study so we will understand. When people say that they're trying to say he looks like an Arab or from the Middle Eastern, they're trying to say he's not a black man. They're trying to make him like the Arabians. It's kind of crazy how the Arabians follow Islam and they don't believe in Jesus as a prophet. But then white people created a doctrine to make him look like the people that don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> Once the Bible was explained properly, they go and make up something. Unbelievable. All right. Is it one of you know, anything, anything else? Anything anybody got? Any anything y'all got over there? Anything? All right, all praise to the most high. All right. So with that, family, Lord's will. Y'all got sort of from the class. So like I said, we have to study, prepare ourselves for when people ask these questions. So in that season, when that time comes, we're able to prove and show why we do what we do and why we believe what we believe using the Bible because the Bible commands us to be able to do so. And we're supposed to do it with the very same joy that we have when we found out. All right? So what is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. Oh, no!